You know, as a physician, I hold in my hand something that's very important. This card right here has two numbers on it. And these two numbers are the keys that unlock my ability as a physician to write for narcotics. It has two numbers. One is AB4381214, and I hope I did it so quick you didn't get it. And the other one is my license number for my state license. And I have to put both of those on a prescription, and I have to write both of those on there in order to write a prescription for a controlled substance. So I have to know those, and I have to write that on a prescription uh, in order for a patient that I see to get a controlled substance. Now used properly under a physician's direction, narcotic pain relievers such as Oxycontin, Percocet, Lortab, or any controlled substance, they're prescription drugs and they do bring much needed relief to many Alabamians when they're used correctly, but the abuse is a serious and growing threat to our population. Alabama has one of the highest rates in the nation of pres prescription pain killers sold per 1,000 people. And the state ranks high in the number of fatal overdose prescription pain killers. Physicians are held at a high standard. And we are the ones, as I just showed you, who have the key to unlock those prescriptions. But when physicians or anyone else, and it's not necessarily physicians, it could be dentists, it could be uh, veterinarians, it could be anyone who can write for a controlled substance. When they choose to overprescribe narcotics to patients, and, these, and they know that these patients may be or are abusing them, then they change from being a physician to really being a drug dealer. These physicians are an embarrassment to the medical profession. And finding ways to address prescription drug abuse and halt the growing epidemic is challenging. Since 2012, Alabama has been on the forefront of promoting greater awareness about the potential dangers of prescription drugs. I joined with, the, with Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper in 2012 to lead the Prescription Drug Abuse Project. It was hosted by the National Governors Association. The Academy was a year-long initiative and a strategic plan aimed at reducing prescription drug abuse. To be truly successful in reducing prescription drugs abuse, states must develop and implement a comprehensive statewide strategy that reduces access to prescription drugs for illicit uses. Again, the word is access, and that's critical, because narcotics require, as I said, a prescription. And as governor, I'm proud to have signed into law in 2013 three bills that were aimed at decreasing the abuse of prescription abuse. House Bill 150 basically set up a, a way of, of checking to see who was on these medications, who had been prescribed the medications, how many medications had been prescribed. So it was a way for us to use a database to check prescription drugs. House Bill 151, the pain management bill, increased the regulation for pain management clinics. And then House Bill 152, also known as the doctor shopping bill, established criminal penalties for patients who doctor shop for prescription drugs. I'm proud of the state, the federal, and the local officials, the officials who have taken in recent years a, a, a very stern approach to combating this real problem that we have in the state of Alabama. Now, I know we have a long way to go, 
But I know if we all work together, we can help solve this real problem. Prescription drug abuse is an epidemic in Alabama, and as long as I'm governor, we will continue to address this deadly issue. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Drug dealing doctors will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. As the governor has explained, the ability to write a prescription for a Schedule II drug does not give medical providers, doctors, and those who support the doctors the right to peddle drugs. Today, the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency, DEA, is conducting probably the largest prescription drug crackdown, shakeup investigation that is ever undertaken. As of this moment today, over 230 people have been arrested in our drug takedown. It's known as polluted because obviously the drugs pollute our young people, they pollute our minds, they pollute our society, and the abuse of the overprescription of these painkillers has led to the use of heroin and other dangerous drugs on the street. We are proud to join with ALEA, the governor, as partners in trying to ferret out those who among us would try to seek profit from what should be a normal course of conducting reasonable medical care. These are legal drugs prescribed within reasonable medical limit, limits to help all of us endure pain, reduce pain, rehab. But when unscrupulous doctors and medical providers take money under the table, file false medical reports, hire people to recruit patients to come in and file false medical histories, then the federal government joining with our state and local task force have no other alternative other than to investigate those activities as if they were selling drugs out on the street in a game, because they do become games. We have pain clinics, we have pharmacies, we have medical providers and doctors who, who join in this type of illegal activity. I think that today so far in Operation Polluted, uh, there have been over 20 doctors and pharmacists arrested, another 100 participants arrested. It is a huge crackdown in at least four states, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas. And we're proud, as I said, to stand with our state partners to let the public know that it's a serious problem. Parents need to watch what their children are doing and taking. Physicians and, and medical providers need to make certain that they follow the strict guidelines of their profession and only prescribe what is reasonably necessary and certainly don't get caught up in any kind of fraudulent activity in which you yourself become actually a drug dealer. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, I'm Spencer Collier, I'm Governor Bentley's Secretary of uh, Law Enforcement. Standing behind me is our uh, State Bureau of Investigation Director, Gene Wiggins. Uh, he's going to address you briefly uh, about our partnership with DEA and particularly the U.S. Attorney's Office. Uh, and then after that, Barry Matson with Office of Prosecution Services, uh, who is a great ally for us at the state level and with our federal partners, uh, will step up and say a few words and try and answer a few questions. At this point, I'll turn it over to Director Wiggins. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. I'd first like to start off thanking today, I'd like to thank the governor for his uh, passion and his leadership that he has displayed during this initiative. And um, it's great to know that when you're out there working like this on an issue like that, that your leadership is supporting you. Um, the leadership that Mr. George Beck, our U.S. Attorney, working with us, if they're great partners, and this initiative, we really appreciate um, all they've done. And um, I'd also like to thank my boss, Secretary Collier, um, for his leadership in this. 
Um, Malia has provided, um, we have agents that are assigned to task force with our federal partners and they have participated from being case agents and working on this initiative. Um, we will continue to work on this initiative with our federal partners and we appreciate their leadership. And um, Alia has been a strong part of this and under direction of leaders such as Mr. George Beck and we'll continue to pursue this. And this is a very important um, epidemic as the government said and it's um, taking too many lives and we, uh, we don't want to see another life lost over this. And um, our commitment is to keep fighting it. Thank you. I'll be very brief, very matching with the Office of Prosecution Services. I uh, thought about what I would say here very briefly to make my point. Uh, I thought about giving you some stats, but really it's about lives and the lives and communities that are impacted. Uh, and I want to, uh, it, it's, it's to point out something, another uh, aspect of this that, that we'll be rolling out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, often you'll have an, op you know, an operation where we announce arrests and things of that nature, but what's unique about this is the governor's commitment state law enforcement and our federal partners commitment to bring to Alabama a comprehensive prevention and education and treatment initiative that we will be rolling out in the next few weeks. We have been uh, for quite some time working on production of media, social media, driving it down to grassroots to the, to the communities um, with uh, a website that will drive people to uh, treatment in their areas where they will be able to just click a button and find all treatment options in their communities. Uh, this is, uh, we've done this very cost effectively with some uh, federal dollars with our federal partners through ADECA and uh, the DA's Association, Office of Prosecution Services, but the initiative came from uh, Governor Bentley in merging the, uh, the governor's initiative uh, on prescription drug abuse with the state task force. So we look forward to rolling that out in the next few weeks, but I think it's important that you're, you're not only identifying, you know, a problem and, and fighting it from a law enforcement standpoint, but comprehensively looking at addiction and prevention because we've got to do that because every one of these cases is someone's life, a community, a child, a father, a mother. These are, these are people, these are lives and these are communities and when they lose hope, they lose everything. So I, I look forward to sharing that program with you in the coming weeks. I think it will be uh, something that we'll all be proud of and it will help save lives. Thank you.